This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who's competing at BKFC 51, which goes down on September 29th. We've got Stanislav Grosu knuckling up and towing the line against Blake Lacaz, and great getting to have Blake on the show once again. How's your day going there, man? Uh, my day is you know, um, good. Uh, morning, got my running in, my cardio, you know, went down my everyday life, you know, work, work construction and uh yeah, it seems like a pretty quick turnaround here. I mean, <clears throat> that must be good. It seems like you're having a pretty active year. I imagine that's something you're excited about. Uh, yeah, that, that's definitely something I wanted. I mean, I like the quick turnaround. I think Big KFC notices that I get in there and fight and kind of put it all out there and, uh, what this sport's about and they really like that so I think that's why the quick turnaround happened so quick for me yeah and just what were the I guess main takeaways from that last fight there I mean obviously didn't go your way in like the rigid binary of a win or loss but always some takeaways to be had and obviously didn't sustain a great deal of damage being that you're having I I can't hear hardly nothing you're saying I'm a man I hate to do that but I can't hear nothing Oh, my apologies. I was just wondering what your main takeaways were from the last fight. Uh, last fight, my main takeaways would be most likely uh, kind of letting him do jump in and get them shots. But, you know, I think I've done good on keeping him on the outside. I thought I won that fight. I don't really see how them judges had it in uh, his favor for the entire fight. And, um, I, mean, I used my advantages. I thought I won that fight. A lot of people thought I won that fight. You know, faces tell what happened in the, in the fight as well. Yeah, for sure. And we were talking about you know the work. It seems like the last time we were talking, at least like West Monroe Boxing Club and Pearl Boxing Club were the main spaces. Is that where you're working this time? Yeah. So um, a lot of these past two fights, I've been getting a lot of work at Pearl. This, this camp here because of the quick turnaround and I was staying, you know, in shape and staying, doing my gym work. Uh, we just basically based this camp because it's a short camp right here in West Monroe. So I haven't really traveled. I have got Austin Stringfellow from Arkansas. He's a good professional boxer. And I've got a few of the pros out of our gym right anymore. And uh, I've, I've, I haven't really got my work with Pearl yet, but I will in a, in a few weeks. But adding that gym with West Monroe Boxing Club and the dog work we're putting in, man, that just it shows in my fights every time. Yeah, and just working with some great, like, localized, you know, BKFC minds, like Zach Calamus and everything like that. Has he been around? Has he been kind of in, like, a, a little bit of a honeymoon phase, or is he back on the grind now sort of thing? Uh, he's back on the grind. And I, like I said, I can't speak for him. I know he's got things in the works, and uh, I think we'll be seeing Zach soon. And I know a lot of people are excited about that. I'm excited about that. And uh, Zach hasn't been down for this camp because, once again, the, the, the quick turnaround. And I, I just haven't – we haven't been able to coordinate and line up our dates and stuff. But I'll be seeing him up in Virginia at the flight. Yeah, I'm sure you have a whole host of great people to get and work with there, though. But just kind of curious because it seems like yourself, and I think I saw the sentiment among some other people, too, just the idea that your fight was closer than, you know, the verdict would have, you know, conveyed there and everything. And just kind of going off an article that was profiling you ahead of your last fight there, you were saying like a year from today, I want to, you know, be in that top five conversation. And I mean, kind of an interesting spot. And as far as you're fighting somebody who you know, has previously fought the current reigning BKFC 
middleweight champion and does have that certain experience. So, like, how much do you think a win here... I mean, not overlooking your opponent, obviously, but how much could a win here really facilitate getting back to, like, that top of the division kind of echelon, I guess? Yeah, so, I mean, I haven't really took no no easy fights at all since I came into BKFC. Garage won't be an easy fight by no means. Just be the toughest test up. Um, he, he said no to the fight. I mean, he said yes to the fight. I said yes to the fight. Neither one of us was going to back down from the challenge. So I expect fireworks. I expect this to be probably my most entertaining fight in BKFC just because of Grazo and who he is and uh, the, the mindset he brings to every fight. He, he's a good fighter. And I got a lot of respect for him, but all that goes out the window for 10, 10 minutes when me and him's in that bell and bare knuckles with each other. Yeah, for sure, and just curious to get you to expound upon that a bit more, because I feel like, you know, I kind of get what you're laying down with, you know, Stanislav Grosu in terms of, like, what he brings to the table, but, like, in ter- you mentioned the mindset and enjoying that, but in terms of, like, some of the stylistic attributes and the previous, you know, BKFC resume, like, what are your thoughts on both of those things? Um, uh, going forward, you thought you mean, like, what BKFC's coming shows and what for? I mean, yeah, just general thoughts on some of his previous, like, BKFC performances, just having, you know, victories over guys like Christian Torres and, you know, Cordis Stitt in his last one. And, yeah, I guess just thoughts on, like, some of his better, you know, X's and O's, like, stylistic attributes in the ring and maybe some things you've seen from previous fights. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, everybody takes takes notice that Grazu didn't get stopped by Mundell. Mundell's the champ right now at middleweight. And he's been stopping everybody, but he didn't stop Grazu. And I, and I know both of them was young in the sport when they fought each other. But you can't take that away from Grazu. He's got that on his resume for sure. That's why he, he hasn't been stopped by Mundell. And uh, he, he thought it was a bad stoppage watching watching that fight over. He thought it was a bad stoppage. And uh, can't take nothing from him. But, yeah, he fought Christian Torres. He caught Christian with some good shots and ended up getting a win there. Uh, I actually watched fight Stitt um, in Virginia the last time they was up there. And uh, he put on a good show. He got knocked down and got right up like a champ and put Stitt on his butt and ended up dropping him two or three more times and winning the fight. So, uh, Grazu's tough as nails, and I know this. And like I said, I think he's going to be my toughest test yet. Yeah, and I mean, what do you attribute to that? I mean, we've talked about the you know, experience he has and stuff like that and what he does in the ring. Is it just the combination of those things, just being like the total amount of fights he has, you know, who he's fought, etc.? Yeah, just especially in this sport because it's a new sport. And, I mean, he's kind of been around for some years and he's followed the, some who's who's in this sport and he's going toe-to-toe with them. And I condone him for that, but... I can't short myself nothing because I've done the exact same thing. And that's why they put me and him up against each other. So I'm not going to say it's make or break. This right here is a tough guy versus a tough guy. I'm the tallest guy in my division. He's probably one of the toughest guys in the division. So uh, I just want to establish, establish myself more in this division for sure with this fight because Grazu is a, a step up from all my past, past fights. And, uh, I get a win here when I get a win here this limits me up back up in the rankings where I want yeah I was gonna say the rate that you're going this year you could have like another quick turnaround and you know be fighting like a couple more guys this year like I said at the rate you're going it seems like the you know strength of activity is very strong oh absolutely so this will be my sixth fight in 11 months so I think I've been the most active guy in BKFC for the past year Yeah, for sure. That you know, and like you said, I think it's like a lot of um, you know what you bring to the table too. Like every time I talk to you, it seems like the shooting missiles and dropping bombs mentality is you know always there, and definitely something you bring to the table. I imagine this next one fits you know comfortably within that too. Oh, absolutely! But I, I like to establish Jab City. I, I, I feel I have the best Jab in BKFC, and Jab City's my slogan right now. And Anybody that gets in the ring with me knows that I'm taking them to Jab City and I'm going to jab them to death and use my six foot seven frame on them. 
yeah, I mean, definitely something you've been able to weaponize very well in BKFC. And I think it was like in a bare knuckle news video I was watching, but it was looking like you were even a bit taller than Ben Rothwell there, which was kind of crazy. I am. So uh, well, a lot of people talk about how tall Big Ben is. Big Ben is a very tall man. He's, he's a giant of a man. But when we stand side to side, I, I got a good head on top of Ben Rothwell. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very tall. And no one understands that until they get in the same room with me. Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot to overcome in the range context with the frame, but, I mean, compounding that with how long you've been involved in boxing and everything, glove boxing and now bare knuckle, just how refined that jab is, definitely would seem like a, a lot for opponents to overcome, especially in the, you know, middleweight ranks and all. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot for them to overcome because I've been putting 15 years of work right behind this jab, and, uh, 68 amateur fights, 20 professional boxing matches, going into the fifth bare knuckle fight now. And it, that's 15 years with my coach Sparky at West Mirror Boxing Club. And he, he's a taller man, and he, he's taught me how to fight tall and uh, use my jab and my reach. And it's just been a big, big thing my whole career. My my whole standpoint on the way I want to fight and uh, it's just the way I was taught and the way I do things and I use it pretty well I think yeah absolutely definitely agree with that and just I mean an exciting fight but in a broader sense cool to see that they're continuing that you know expansion into like the Virginia market and stuff like that I mean like a relatively newer one they're getting into there so that must be kind of cool to you know kind of be part of that just like the broader expansion of the sport and all uh, last time I went, I was in Norfolk, Virginia. Last time they had a show there, and uh, it was awesome. I had a great time. Zach won his fight. He stopped. He's gotten the second round. The crowd was electric because he put on a, a great show, great card as always. And I'm looking forward to coming back to Salem, Virginia. I know it's not far from Roanoke, Roanoke Virginia. There, and uh, I'm expecting a big crowd there once again and I just want to put on a show I'm, I'm coming to put on fight another tough guy just like I've always done my whole career and BKFC got a good matchup with me and Grazi we'll have a lot of watching us yeah, and I mean, just the way you're talking about it, I mean, it strikes me as a guy that you've been watching for a bit now. Like, it doesn't seem like you had to get into, like, a tape study cycle when, like, this bout offer came your way. Um, so I, I knew about this fight, actually, before I took the, the Donald Sanchez fight in Albuquerque. This was, this was actually what I had in mind and we had set on the schedule. The Sanchez fight got put, a, put ahead and... Uh, I, things hadn't been signed on the contract with Grazi, so I took the, the Sanchez fight. It sounded right. I thought I went out there and won that fight in Albuquerque, but I think I got snubbed a bad decision. And we went five rounds and still got the good turnaround like we talked. Two days out right now, and I cannot wait to get back in the BKFC ring and throw some fists. Yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting to see you in there. And I'm kind of curious. I mean, maybe you're not the person to ask this in a sense because whenever we've talked about fighting, you've kind of likened it to court. Like anything can kind of happen. But I guess I'm wondering like how much of a variable it might be just the rate of activity. Like we were talking before about just how active you are. Like not just one of the most active guys at 175, but really in the company in a certain sense. Do you think your strength of schedule, you know, compared to his could be you know, a bit of a difference maker here? Because you've had multiple fights already this calendar year and just, you know, checking out his record and everything like that. I mean, he's definitely had good performances, but this being his sophomore fight of the calendar year, like, do you think your strength of schedule will be a variable in this one to look out for or not so much? Uh, absolutely. I think my, me being more active and uh, using my activity this year because I've, I've fought three times this year. He's fought one time. And absolutely, we, we got just the same amount of fights. But I think me being more active as a fighter and more fresh, just staying back-to-back -back on my fights, I think that, that will play a big role in there. You can't sit there and be hesitant and 
think about things because he's back in the ring. Because I'm not thinking about things. So I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm doing this. And to get back on the actability of me, you know, like being in Big KFC. So for six times in 11 months, this will be five of those will be bare knuckle fights. Only one of those is the boxing match. So bare knuckle fights. And I've had to get stitches one time out of all five of my bare knuckle fights. So. I, I think I think my health's good, you know, with me turning around and everything, but I don't really take much damage. I won all five rounds that last fight. Donald had to get stitches and taped up and whatnot. I didn't have to get nothing. I had just a little, a little mark in my eye, and that was it. I, I'm just ready to get back in there and get, get my win back. Yeah, for sure, and a very exciting fight, definitely one that I was excited to, you know, see on the BKFC page when I was kind of going through, seeing what was on BKFC 51, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on with this one, and I appreciate you, you know, giving some insights heading into it, Blake, but, you know, just being mindful of your time and everything, man, I'm kind of curious if there's like a final parting thought you might want to add as we're wrapping up, though. Yeah, and I kind of touched on it earlier, a lot of odds are going to be on this fight, uh, they put me in garage as a feature co on the show, and that means you know that that's a lot of eyes going on us leading into the main main part of the card. So a lot of people are going to be watching us. We're we're both a threat in our division at 175. He is, and I am. I know that for sure. That's why we're trying to go tow it up and see who makes the best of what in this match. Um, I'm coming to fight. I'm coming to get my win back. That's the last note I want to leave this on because I got snubbed a bad decision in Albuquerque on BKFC 48, and I'm back at 51, and I'm coming to get a win one way or another. Yeah, well, you seem laser-focused. Definitely comes across, and very excited for this Stanislav Grosu fight. I mean, it definitely has, like, fireworks written all over. It looks like it'll be, you know, at least a strong contender for fight of the night, if not outright getting that distinction at BKFC 51. So, again, to reiterate, thanks for making the time to talk ahead of this great card at, you know, you know September 29th in Salem, Virginia, and everything like that. Should be a great one, Blake. And, yeah, thanks so much, man. You have a good rest of your day. and looking forward to peeping the fight when it goes down. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. You have a good day, too. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC 51, which goes down on September 29th. We've got Blake Lacaz knuckling up and towing the line against Stanislav Grosu, and great having Stanislav on the show for the very first time. How's your day going, man? Hey there, Stanislav. You having a good day so far? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good to hear, man. I'm just curious to, you know, get some insights on the last one there. That seemed like a, you know, pretty emphatic win for you. I mean, definitely a lot to talk about with this next fight, but, you know, curious to get your thoughts on, you know, that last one there, getting the second round KO over Cordis Stitt. Oh, yep. Yeah, so, but I don't like to make prediction, but I think this guy... Like, the side of the left hand, he don't have anything. Like, I don't think he's going to go more than two rounds. Oh, so the result didn't necessarily surprise you. Like, it was exactly what you thought, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. I mean, but you seemed very fired up. I mean, even talking about wanting to avenge that loss to current you know, BKFC champ Dave Mundell in the rematch and everything like that. So, I mean, yeah, just an interesting arc you've had in the company, just, you know, having debuted and, you know, fought against Dave Mundell, who's now the reigning middleweight champion. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I hope to have a rematch with this guy, because I like him, but I, I'm sure I can beat him. And 
Unfortunately, I'm gonna ask for the rematch again. Yeah, for sure. It definitely seemed like something you were, you know, kind of eyeballing there. But I mean, entering the ring for your fifth bare knuckle boxing fight now, and just was noticing you have a few MMA fights over amateur and pro, as you know, per some of the aggregators out there just checking out Sure Dog and you know Topology. So <clears throat> kind of curious, like what I guess elements that you've crossed over from your MMA experience into bare knuckle, but also like aspects you've had to you know amend in your game in a newer combat sport like what are some things you've been able to transfer to bare knuckle from your mma experience and what are some things that don't cross over i guess like the mma experience is gonna it was it was helping me like a lot like to understand how the fights are going in but you know like bare knuckles is different like i have a couple of fights uh, my ties i have uh, 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 mma like boxing, but that's different. Like, like all these martial arts, but we can see, like, I feel like more comfortable because that this is a, a, a real fight. Like, I used to fight on the street, uh, on the street, like when I was kids a lot, like between me and my friends. And when I switched to BKFC, that like it's making me feel good. Like that is what I like to do. It. Like it's not just a sport; it's something. I like, I, I'm okay, like, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think it comes across, I mean, obviously in the way you're talking about it right now, but even how you express yourself in the fights, because even in that last one, it seemed like you overcame some adversity when you got dropped. But I mean, rallying back to get the finish, so it even seems like you express yourself like that oh, yeah. in that regard. I, I got dropped in that one, like, I'm not sure I'm going to drop, I'm going to be dropped in this one, but... If you want to drop me, you make your your, your fight the uh, worst. Like, if you want to stop me, it's better <laughs> knock me out, or I don't know. But if you want to drop me, that is not a good idea. It's better knock me out. <laughs> yeah, so it almost gets you into a different gear than, like, when you face a bit of adversity. A, a second? I didn't get it. Oh, no worries. I was just going to say, like, it almost, like, fires you up more so to, like, you know, respond to adversity. <laughs> it's waking me up. Oh shit, I'm fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just curious to get some insights into, I guess, like the lead up into this one, because I did see you, you know, shouting out <clears throat> Dustin Pegg a few months ago at this point, and he's readying to fight on this card. Have you been able to, like, work at all with Dustin in this camp, or is it just more of, like, mutual yeah, respect kind of thing? We were, like, like um, I think last, last, last week, we went for the spotting, like, we spot together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how was that? I mean, such an experienced combat sports veteran and also readying to fight on the same card. Yeah, with Dustin, for example, like, uh, when it's part, like, you can see the, like, the experience. Like, it's not like I'm spotting at the gym with the guys I already know. So Dustin is uh, it's different. And you can see he already fought the KFC and he knows what that means. Because a lot of people are talking, ah, oh, why you didn't do that? You you could do that, but that didn't know what I'm talking about, and she was like careful what she did in the sparring. I, I was the same. Like it was a nice experience, and it's helping like and me and him a lot. And you you gonna see the difference in this fight because he's fighting his main card, right? <laughs> Yeah, very interesting fight he has against Joe Elmore coming up. And yeah, just, I mean, a great looking, yeah, just a great looking card for sure. But I mean, I did mention him by name, but it seems like the main, I guess, like space, like gym area, your training is Disciple MMA Academy. Can you talk about the work had in that space there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like who might be some other like sparring partners or training partners at Disciple, I guess. Uh, I didn't get it. Can you, can you ask again? Oh, yeah, no worries. It's hard, it's hard to hear you. I don't know why. Like, it's like uh, echo. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, like, Disciple MMA Academy seems like the main space there. I was just wondering if you could, you know, tell me about how this recent camp at Disciple MMA has been. Oh, okay. So, Disciple, Disciple MMA is the gym where I am training. Like, when I came in the United States, that was the first gym, that was the first gym uh, where I went for the training. 
and I learned a lot, and I still training there like since 2015, I think, like eight years. And like there are a lot of guys, a lot of sparring guys, a lot of experienced coaches, like it's a lot of people you uh, from who you can learn. Like uh, I, I, I like the gym. I love the gym. Like it's my second home here. <laughs> And this seems like a cool one because as much as you very much proudly represent your nation of Moldova, I mean, <clears throat> just seeing that you very much fight out of Virginia on a lot of these aggregators, just in terms of like where you train and get in that work, like how does it feel to, you know, be back in the home state for this one, quote unquote, like just in the sense of you fight out of Virginia and rep that area, but also being able to represent Moldova as well. Oh yeah, yeah, like, like, I feel proud, like, when I say I represent Moldova, like, I'm the only one from Moldova, there, we don't have bare knuckles, like, I met bare knuckles when I came here, we don't have in Europe bare knuckles, but, uh, when I came in Virginia, like, I am proud too, because, like, I'm, from, I'm living in Virginia now, and, like, I'm one of the BKFC fighters, and I'm proud, like, when the people are, oh, see, oh, that guy is fighting BKFC, like, I'm feeling good. <laughs> Yeah, love to hear that. Definitely, you know, represent very well. But I'm curious to get your thoughts on this next fight here because, I mean, definitely an interesting competitor just in the sense of, you know, a good amount of, you know, experience in BKFC, but also just someone who has, like, just such an interesting, like, frame for the division, like, just such, like, a cartoonishly long reach and, like, a sophistication in the jab. Like, in terms of, like, I guess some of the better stylistic attributes of what you've seen from... Blake Lacaz, like what does he do well in the ring from what you've seen? What he's doing here, yeah, like I told you, he has just the left hand. The left hand is perfect. I like it. He, I, I saw he's working on the on the range. He's staying on the distance. This is what I am doing. I'm working on the distance. If he's not gonna work on the distance, I'm okay. I'm comfortable to work on the clinch to go close because I I used to to practice uh, Muay Thai, and I, I, my cringe is, is, is good. And if it's not, I, I'm going to try to work on, on the distance of him. If, not, if it's not going to work, I'm going to make pressure. And he don't like it, because I saw he's a, like, he's a boxer. He don't like cringe. If I'm going to stay in the distance, and if I'm going to make him, like, if I'm going to play him game, I think he's going to beat me. But if I'm going to... Do my game, no chance. I'm telling you, like, second round. Yeah, and that's well put, because as much as it is, like, a, you know, separate sport in and of itself, that was kind of how I was kind of almost looking at this fight. And I'm not afraid to get hit, but when, I, when I'm when i going to touch him, it doesn't matter, him or somebody else. If I'm going to touch him, he's going to feel it. He, he, he's going to feel pain. I'm going to make him suffer. Not... Because I, I used to spar of the bigger guys, the heavyweight guys, and like I'm hitting like heavyweight. So you're like working with like heavy. Like if I gonna touch him a couple times, he's gonna go down. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just so you so you, sorry. You were saying you've been like actively working with heavyweights and like hitting the same as them. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, but like, pretty much all the people I was sparring. Was bigger, much bigger than me. Like Dustin was, like he's 65. He was uh, smaller than me. The rest of them was bigger than me. And I did do, I, I did as well. How much of that was to like account for the reach of your opponent, or was it just like you were just getting in work and it wasn't in that context? I guess. Uh, I, I, I didn't get it. What did you say? Oh, sorry, just because I was saying he's got a longer reach. Like, were you working with heavyweights to kind of mirror the reach a little bit to ready for the fight, or not so much? Yes, yeah, so with the heavyweights, when I work with the big guys, taller guys, I try to make pressure on them and uh, to, to slip that uh, left jab and uh, to make pressure. And you talk. Like, <laughs> I don't know if she got a big reach. I don't know if she know how to use it because some guys have a degree but they don't know how to use it but my reach is big too I'm I think I'm 76 I have this too but, and I, I know how to use it maybe if he's better than me I'm gonna go close I'm gonna work in the clinch 
and he have no idea how to work in the clinic because I saw his fight. Ah, he got just a good left jab. That's it. I mean, definitely a lot of interesting facets to this matchup, and you know, kind of curious about some other things outside of the fighting game, I guess, because I was checking out some of the social media, and it seems like you're quite the proud dad and husband there. Like I even caught you, you know, checking out BKFC 42 with the kids. Like, you had a photo in that regard, and you got to show your son the Police Gazette medal and stuff like that. Like, do your kids watch your fights, or is it just, like, you know, wait till after and you let them know you're a good kind of thing? Every time, every time when I, like, when I'm watching the fight, she's with me. When I go in the gym, he's with me. Like, I take him with me everywhere. Like, I cannot take him with me in the ring, but I take with me everywhere. We are watching together. Like, he knows uh, where I am, uh, who is my opponent, uh, <laughs> that is daddy, that is fighting. Uh, he knows everything. Like, I like to teach him. I, I'm not forcing him to do it, but I take him with me, and if he's going to want later to become a fighter, why not? Yeah, that's fun. So you're getting the sense that he seems really excited about what you're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is, he is. I, and sometimes, like, when I'm coming home, when I have pictures on the face, he's like, oh, you're okay? Yeah, oh, okay, it's fine. He likes it. He knows, he knows. No, it's great to hear, man. Good to have that, you know, kind of support. It's like that classic, like, my dad can beat up your dad sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun, man. Always good to see strong, fun family dynamics. Definitely what it's all about, man. But you've been good with your time, and it's been fun getting to you know, chat with you a bit today, Stanislav. But I want to be mindful of the rest of your time as well. So I'm curious if maybe you have like a final parting thought you'd want to add as we're wrapping things up here, man. And I know, like, soon you're going to be a new world champion. This is what I can tell you. Like... I don't know. Maybe this year, end of the year, maybe next year, for sure, I'm going to take, I, I, I'll I become a world champion. Because I see I, I can do it, and I did my debut with the world champion, with Mandel, and he's not, he is not that good. Like, but I improved myself a lot from the first fight. And I think I, I, I'll become a champion, you'll see. That's my thing, Yeah, I mean, just, this is such an exciting fight for the middleweight division, and I find middleweight one of the more intriguing divisions in the company, for sure. So, I mean, very much excited for this one on September 29th against Blake Lacaz, and just really excited for BKFC 51 overall. But just to reiterate, I appreciate you coming on and giving great insights on the show, Stanislav, and definitely excited to you know, see this fight when it goes down. But until then, you have a good rest of your day, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Thank you. Have a good day.